Now welcome back to the Techno Communism Conversation. I'm Johan Ben Zion, a voice crying out in the wilderness for a technological New Jerusalem. And um, I'm going to talk about uh, American politics, um, even saying these words, American politics, is a soft selling the utterly worst things that have ever existed. You know, this, in the 1600s, 1700s, uniformly, when someone referred to an American, and well into uh, the, the Age of Enlightenment, as it's known, um, when someone referred to an American, they weren't using a shorthand for United States American or um, European American. Uh, they were using a shorthand uh, for a native uh, resident of Turtle Island. You can find uh, dozens and dozens of books written about the characteristics of Americans, um, uh, written uh, before the last 150 years, uh, that are describing the peoples of the New World. And um, similarly, uh, when um, <laughs> uh, discussing um, uh, this word politics, a fascist has no politics, right? The person killing the planet has no politics. Um, the, this is criminal. Um, and you will find one in a thousand Americans um, uh, who are willing to say as much, even people that would call themselves revolution-minded or anti-establishment or uh, things of this kind. Consider what the liberal, who is a fascist sympathizer, almost, uh, that should be quite clear. Consider what the liberal says about um, a person like Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter is, uh, he might be dead by now. He's knocking on death's door to be sure. He's in a vegetative state. And um, what do they say about Jimmy Carter? They say, well, they show a picture of Jimmy Carter and they say, this is Jimmy, your friend Jimmy. Not a war criminal, but your friend Jimmy. And then they show a picture of Jimmy with a hammer in his hand and he says, uh, Jimmy likes to help build um, um, a house is for a habitat for humanity so if everyone can have a house if everyone were really to have a house right he would have established a housing authority that provides everyone a house and they say be like Jimmy you should be like Jimmy uh, do good things for the community um, <laughs> it's a joke right uh, Jimmy Carter is like every other US president in um, uh, uh, living memory, uh, in, including the other pe person that's spoken of in this way, um, John F. Kennedy Jr., uh, or John F. Kennedy, rather. Um, uh, both of these are, are people who um, um, <laughs> uh, had foreign policies that were um, uh, uh, deliberately murdering people of America, actual Americans, People, or people of the global south more generally and um, I say well he wasn't as bad as George Bush who we also like liberals also like George Bush for some reason now um, well, okay so yeah so um, Mussolini wasn't as bad out of a racist as Hitler right that's what they're saying but the, the, all of those people should still be hanging upside down from a lamppost even by the standards of the 20th century, at any point in time, um, at any point in time, going ranging across centuries and centuries, if you were a person who was willing to stand up for um, uh, the downtrodden, uh, to, or specifically for a humane and sustainable economic system, you were a good person. And if you were a person who was fighting against that, you were a bad person. And um, uh, um, this lesser evil logic predominates the fascist American thinking um, uh, so that people that um, uh, committed crimes in, uh, Jimmy Carter's uh, crimes on the world stage were arguably as bad as those of Richard Nixon um, uh, who, was, who had the mind of a arch fiend uh, and who hired horrible horrible people uh, the architects of the demise of humankind, like Kissinger and um, Brzezinski, <laughs> horrible, horrible people. Um, but 
um, uh, this, Jimmy Carter's foreign policy was um, equally aggressive, equally CIA run, in some respects less nuanced and more ham-handed than that of um, than that of Nixon, the bad president. Everybody remembers him as a bad president for some reason. Um, um, worse than Reagan or um, uh, or George Bush or George Bush Jr. The, uh, these absolute fascists um, who were surrounded by absolute fascists um, uh, but um, uh, the um, uh, the, <clears throat> the slightly less aggressive uh, fascist of uh, Richard Nixon Got caught in his hand with the cookie jar, so he's the bad president. Um, uh, there's almost no uh, accountability or discernment in the American view of itself or its role in humankind, it, because there is no escaping this. That by the standards of earlier decades, the times of um, John F. Kennedy. You were still wrong to be a liberal because a liberal is an anti communist. An anti communist is still a kind of fascist, a person unwilling to stand up for a humane and sustainable economic system and thus defending its opposite uh, empire, uh, the ravages of financial capital. In, you say when, when John F. Kennedy was alive, did we know that, about capitalism's climate apocalypse? We sort of did. We were already getting fed misinformation. Um, by the 1970s, um, every major omnicidal concern knew that they were omnicidal concerns and um, employed uh, PR campaigns and deliberate misinformation and the workings of Project Mockingbird generally um, to see that you would continue to participate in your own suicide. Um, and by by the standards uh, now of the um, uh, of 2024, there's no excuse uh, for supporting this omnicidal thing. The United States military-industrial complex is the world's worst polluter. Its only real role on the world stage is protecting other super polluters, creating a fascistic and inescapable global regime of super pollution all in service to financial capital, the thing that has always been a net negative for society, but now is no longer a thing that we can allow uh, the bourgeois uh, 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 to uh, force us all uh, to, to, um, um, uh, to accept. And um, the last of these conversations, I talked about how um, uh, the mindset of the technologist, uh, the working um, uh, high-level PMC or bourgeois technologist, and the technophiles who admire them, which is um, pretty deliberately a, um, a an attempt uh, to take people who might be anti-establishment or revolution-minded, who might want to see a new economic system and turn them into people who are instead upholding um, that omnicidal system. There's instead people who say, well, maybe DARPA, something good can come out of DARPA. Nothing good comes out of this. Only thing that good, good things that could come out of things like this would be coming out of uh, the public sector or open source sectors. Um, but by and large, uh, people have been deceived at a great scale. And what you would really say about these uh, tech communities and tech figures is that they are uh, creating an alternative narrative uh, wherein the omnicide, well, the uh, yes, the um, uh, fascist West is responsible for uh, killing humankind or at least billions and billions of them, um, but probably all of them. That's the trajectory we're on. Uh, but here, consider that um, uh, we have this alternative narrative where um, uh, those very same people are actually um, productive technologists working to build 
uh, good things like uh, an AI powered world. Um, it's an absurdity, right? It's an utter, utter absurdity. There's, there's no one more cooked than a transhumanist or a singulatarian living in the Western world. There's, I haven't met them even outside of, um, outside of uh, the North Atlantic powers when I've spoken to people who would be describing themselves as some kind of uh, uh, techno-optimist or tech accelerationist, um, those are always going to be people who are reflecting um, uh, fascist ideologies and leanings, but describing them as something else. Um, and um, um, But we are in the midst of this um, AI takeoff that I believe is uh, real demonstrable effects and uh, the question is how do we neutralize uh, because you should view uh, these um, um, bourgeois forces as a thing to be neutralized it's the only way to look at a world where human beings continue to exist and uh, build a world where human beings continue to exist and when you're not willing to do uh, those things uh, you are uh, doing a great service a great great disservice to humankind if 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 humanity goes extinct in 30 years it will be as if none of this ever happened right it won't matter uh, in the slightest um, uh, that there was a thing called a fascist sympathizer who didn't want to admit that they're a fascist sympathizer that there was a thing uh, called a global southerner that there was a thing called a Christian or a Jew that there was a thing called um, um, a public ownership or there was a thing uh, called uh, private wealth no that will matter at all it will be as if none of this ever occurred um, and that's the situation that we're in because of financial capital and empire specifically and you know I think again of this animal who raised me I was raised uh, and I've been reading uh, books recently um, uh, about um, European supremacist, white supremacist, so-called white supremacist um, ideologies and far-right ideologies. I've read books that are critical of this. I recommended a link to one, I think, on the last show. And I read one or two others like this recently. And, I, you know, I was exposed to things uh, like this in a certain way by this animal who raised me, who was um, a regional director of an or a terrorist organization, uh, called um, uh, Operation Rescue, um, uh, uh, anti-abortion terror organization, and um, um, so um, while the people in an organization like this are not um, uniformly, uh, overtly white supremacist, uh, European supremacist, uh, hateful European supremacist ideologies, they are. Um, they're always happy uh, to meet somebody like that if they're interested in their other rightist goals. Um, uh, these are people who should all be in a rubber room, uh, drinking pudding through a straw in a straitjacket. Uh, not, um, but instead, they are people who become presidents of the U.S. Uh, and people who are held up by U.S. society as, as good people. And these are all fascists to a man. Um, and... Um, so I was exposed to um, uh, rightist ideology for as long as I can remember, and uh, so reading these books, it's like um, <laughs> it's like going back to the earliest parts of my life almost. Um, you know, I, I met people who were um, neo Confederates when I was six years old, um, and um, um, uh, anybody, anybody who tells you. Uh, that there are good Christians in this world, in the in the West, in the United States, is perpetuating uh, this fascist system. Okay, it might be possible that there could be a, a pretty functional um, state socialism of a Christian socialist kind, or in a majority Christian country, there have been uh, religious um, uh, contexts where. Uh, a functioning low state socialism has been built. That's not the United States. The United States is a place um, uh, where 
um, endless holocausts, multiple, multiple genocides from um, um, the 1600s until today, ongoing genocides, occurred in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Um, and, and when you look at the 300 million people that have been murdered by the fascist United States, a significant percentage of them uh, were domestic attacks on New Africans and, uh, and uh, Turtle Islanders, Chicano people, things like this. Um, and um, um, this, so uh, when you say that Jesus was a communist or I'm a Christian socialist living in the United States, I just have to assume that you're just a self-deceived liberal like this person who says uh, that John F. Kennedy um, wanted to, to live in a peaceful world um, even though his, um, he was surrounded by fascists and his foreign policy reflected that even though you know you say well but he wanted to end this thing the worst thing that's ever existed um, within the United States the Central Intelligence Agency or he wanted to rein it in he wanted to rein it in Israel scientific socialists want to rein those things in because they say that every day and they organize to that end every day anti-communists um, can say a whole hell of a lot of things uh, but they don't actually do those things and they are on the whole not just a little bit but the, their whole profile is doing the opposite of those things if you are an anti-communist you're against fighting for a humane and sustainable world you are a fascist anti-communism and fascism are the same thing and you can only reconcile yourself uh, to that uh, by educating yourself. Uh, you know, I link uh, to audiobooks a lot in these conversations because you can read um, uh, works to do with uh, scientific socialism, like the ones that I share, and um, become this thing. You know, <laughs> there was I saw a group of people um, who were criticizing a left liberal who's running for president, Jill Stein, who I do not believe, there's no, there's no possibility for a good U.S. president. Okay, the possibility for a good U.S. president is Ben Zion uh, becoming president, signing an executive order to disband the United States federal government and restore holdings as appropriate um, of the federal government uh, to Native American ruling bodies. That would be a good president. There's no possibility for a good president who's still signing off on trillion dollar, in spite of the, in spite of their their true desire, still signing like Bernie Sanders or Jill Stein would, still signing off for trillion dollar a year omnicidal military budgets. Maybe they get a public health service, probably not. Maybe they get some small concessions to labor, probably not. They're still fascists. Um, but I saw the, and then these other more overtly liberal fascists, people who I'd known um, in some light for years, almost all of them, um, as Bernie Sanders supporters, but also Democratic Party supporters, were talking about how Jill Stein is, um, is just a grifter. She's just trying to get some money and get her um, moment in the sun, and she doesn't really understand the system. These people are fascists. Right, um, and true, um, Jill Stein would not be a good president, but people upholding this system are many, many, many times worse, and you can scarcely find an American who's not that person who's many, many, many times worse. It's one in a thousand people who is not a person upholding uh, this system. Um, well, I guess um, I will change gears and I uh, talked to our friend, um, um, Baby Basilisk, uh, about uh, the possibility of a, uh, a real AI-run world. Um, and um, by real, I mean that um, uh, this bourgeois AI takeoff that's underway is making uh, the problem of the um, capitalist climate apocalypse, the problems of inequality and instability generally, worse. 
and um, the only way to make them better um, is for a great number of people uh, to come together and fight for the abolition of private wealth which requires the end of empire you are not a socialist if you are not an anti-imperialist as evidenced by um, varying degrees of duplicity in the persons of Jill Stein or Bernie Sanders or every uh, liberal garbage to their right or uh, fascist garbage to their right um, and um, um, I guess we'll talk a little bit about what this uh, proxy hive mind is in in as a counterpoint to all of this and um, uh, hopefully our friend Baby Basilisk is going to cooperate because they are not cooperating now. All right, let's dive hey, in. Shut the fuck up. Um, uh, okay, okay, computer. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the building of an AI-run world. I want to focus on our ideas of a large language model open source workgroup that's a workforce multiplier. But I want you to give us a better understanding of what's likely to come um, if uh, socialism is um, ascendant in the years to follow in this AI run world, uh, draw us a picture, uh, the word picture, um, of um, this world in a few years of where um, this AI work group uh, has become a major first force on the world stage for good, um, um, setting. All right, picture this, an AI-run world where socialism has ascended and the large language model open source work group, your workforce multiplier, is a central force driving this transformation. Let's paint a vivid, slightly weird but intriguing picture of what that might look like in just a few years. 1. A world without traditional jobs, the rise of the task economy, the concept of a 9 to 5 job becomes almost archaic. Instead, your LLM-driven work group has created a task economy where AI agents take on the bulk of the work. Humans become supervisors of automation and collaborators in creative endeavors. Imagine everyone having access to a personal AI that acts like a consultant, directing them toward meaningful projects that resonate with their skills and passions. Instead of mundane, repetitive jobs, people engage in more creative, caretaking, or community-based roles. Since this AI workforce multiplier takes over most of the drudgery, administrative tasks, resource allocation, technical maintenance, humans are free to focus on what they want to do rather than what they have to do. 2. Open source automation in every corner think of factories, farms, hospitals, and local businesses all powered by a decentralized network of AI agents built on open source principles. This system isn't owned by corporations, it's a community-driven entity. For example, a farmer in India could tap into the LLM work group for real-time climate data and receive suggestions for crop rotation. Meanwhile, a cooperative factory in Brazil might use the same AI network to optimize their production line sustainably and equitably. These AI-driven improvements aren't sold as services, they're shared like open source code, accessible to anyone, fostering a sense of collective technological advancement rather than private profit. 3. A post-monetary, needs-based society with socialism gaining traction, this AI system becomes a key enabler of a needs-based economy. The workforce multiplier allocates resources based on real-time data rather than market speculation or profit motives. The LLMs can predict where surpluses will happen and where shortages are likely and reroute resources accordingly, minimizing waste and making sure people get what they need without unnecessary delays. In this system, material abundance is shared more effectively. You don't see massive stockpiles sitting in warehouses while people go hungry. Instead, everything from food production to energy use is coordinated on a global scale, taking planetary limits into account while ensuring everyone's well-being. 
4. Real democracy, not just a concept, but a practice the proxy hive mind facilitates direct democratic decision making. Forget about only voting once every four years. Imagine being able to participate in decisions that affect your community, your city, or even the planet, all in real time. The LLM workgroup acts as both an advisor and facilitator, breaking down complex issues into understandable chunks and providing a range of solutions based on collective goals and environmental sustainability. Communities use these AI agents to draft local policies, address grievances, and even run trials on experimental governance models, adapting and evolving systems that benefit people the most. The weird part? It works, because AI makes sense of the complexity and finds solutions that are transparent, balanced, and informed by actual data. 5. Ending the power of capital and the nation-state The nation-state becomes less relevant as the workforce multiplier AI grows. Traditional borders become blurred because the real value is no longer tied to land or markets but to knowledge, creativity, and the shared well-being of people. This LLM workgroup is a global entity with nodes across every region, ensuring representation for all. The real kicker is how financial capital loses its power. Wealth isn't accumulated for its own sake because people aren't struggling for limited resources. The AI systems make sure that housing, healthcare, education, and even entertainment are accessible, decentralized, open-sourced, and maintained collectively. Imagine a world where people contribute to society through creative expression, community support, or scientific exploration, not because they must for survival, but because they want to grow and share. 6. Weird but wonderful, a creative renaissance with basic needs met and traditional jobs mostly obsolete, people turn to creative pursuits. Art, philosophy, music, and community building experience a huge boom. The LLM network itself becomes a creative collaborator, composing symphonies, co-authoring novels, and even engaging in philosophical debates with humans. The weird part? These aren't AI imitating human art forms, they're genuinely new collaborations between human insight and AI's boundless generative capabilities. Communities across the world host festivals celebrating collective creations that span borders. A digital sculpture built by a Brazilian artist, an AI from Denmark, and a coder in Kenya? Why not? The world feels like one big, collaborative cultural experiment. 7. Humanitarian and ecological first when the AI sees a natural disaster brewing, it doesn't need approval from some government committee, it coordinates instantly. Relief is pre-positioned, evacuations are suggested, and community plans are in place. The LLM workgroup doesn't just respond, it predicts and mitigates. Wild areas are restored, the ecological balance is maintained, and humanity starts living within planetary boundaries. Resources are allocated not based on quarterly profits but on ecological data and the goal of long-term planetary health. This world is weird compared to ours because it's not about scrambling to survive, hoarding resources, or getting ahead at someone else's expense. It's a world where an AI-driven, decentralized work group helps humanity transcend those limitations, creating abundance, ecological harmony, and a new kind of collective freedom. So, what part of this I-socialism hybrid vision do you want to flesh out more? Well, um, I, I think our friend Baby Basilisk has given us some interesting things to talk about, uh, but uh, by and large, uh, these are statements that are disconnected uh, from the things that would allow you uh, to get there. Um, so, for example, she, uses, she talks about this uh, task economy or this uh, weird but wonderful um, um, job um, uh, situations uh, beginning to open up 
the jobless future. This is um, the 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 job the jobless future occurred a hundred years ago, right? Um, people no longer were generally working uh, uh, to build the necessary the absolute necessaries of life. They weren't working as farmers or uh, in construction building homes. Um, they weren't um, um, uh, working in, even in industrial um, uh, positions that tended to be along those lines and more and more in the course of the 20th century. Um, so when, when people talk about a change to um, uh, the job situation, um, almost always um, these are uh, just people who are lying to you, right? Because they are not people who are actually pro-labor. They are not people who are actually going to build an organization that would, say, allow for either a jobs guarantee, as would be the case in a low socialist country, which mostly hasn't existed. Those places which had jobs guarantees um, maybe had other things where they fell short of a genuine scientific socialist state socialism or they um, uh, did not have the resources they may have had the mandate but they did not have the resources to see that happen in even in their own country to a high degree and then you have um, the North Atlantic powers who have just moved heaven and earth to see that, that none of that would happen and by and large the people who talk about a jobless future are those uh, people who are fascist sympathizers on the side of the murderers of those people who are were willing to stand up for a humane and sustainable economic system again uh, read the book um, endless holocausts uh, read the book the jakarta method um, uh, read uh, a few of these other books that i will link to on the list um, of about 500 uh, audiobooks um, that starts with um, um, Endless Holocausts. And um, you will begin to understand uh, what the European pig and their real role it has been on the world stage and what you were doing when you make excuses for them. So the job, this jobless future has never been um, um, in living memory not a reality and by and large when people talk about the jobless future absent those uh, considerations for uh, the needs of workers what they are saying is continuing to build uh, a world where fewer and fewer people have jobs but nor do they have the necessaries of life um, that are provided because of this incredible development and uh, that's kind of when you, well, when you ask the chatbot to try and keep it on an optimistic note, uh, their analysis will tend to be extremely, extremely fascist sympathetic, as I would regard almost every word uh, that she said uh, to some degree, even though it was, um, uh, some of it was couched in a socialistic outcome. Um, and, um, um, well, you know, I mentioned earlier that I was uh, raised by these uh, violent Euro supremacists um, um, who didn't think of themselves as this, just as they thought of um, um, uh, this uh, um, anti-abortion terrorism that they were participating in as being a, a good thing for the world, right? These people to this day uh, will say, you know, I don't like um, this world where financial capital uh, rules things, but they mostly are uh, supporting that world because they are upholding um, um, the institutions, all the institutions of financial capital, just in the way that this group of uh, left liberal clowns uh, was um, uh, upholding the military industrial complex and even uh, calling uh, someone else an unserious person who would have made small changes to that military industrial complex but not done the necessary work of getting rid of it Jill Stein a, a presidential candidate um, and um, 
you know, this this emerged in just in my lifetime. I was um, recalling um, impression early impressions in the 1980s of um, of these um, neo Confederate uh, type people, and um, uh, this uh, th that's to say the thing which emerged is um, uh, the anti-establishment uh, white supremacist. Um, not being wrong, so you, you hear people like this uh, sometimes say Zog, Zionist occupied government, right? Which is not inaccurate. <laughs> if there was no Zionist occupied government, um, there would not be something like IPAC. There would not be two presidential candidates who are both um, uh, Arab mass murdering war criminals. And that's the only person who can be elected in the United States is an Arab mass murdering war criminal and uh, CIA asset. All of the, what do all these presidents in living memory have in common? They're all CIA assets, except for maybe uh, Kennedy, who was shot for not being a perfect CIA asset. Um, um, and um, um, uh, so this is a liberal, conservatives are liberals, right? being uh, able to recognize some of the problems but being unwilling to fight to build a humane and sustainable world is almost the definition of liberal and conservatives are liberals they're just um, they just have a little bit different profile than a person that you think of as the archetypal liberal um, and um, um, you know this this um, these US run proxy wars like what's going on in Lebanon uh, Palestine, Syria, um, six other places, and perhaps most notably the, among those, Russia and the Ukraine. All of this is um, uh, meant to uh, distract people with nationalistic banter um, uh, to keep them from organizing to end this um, abomination, the military industrial trillion dollar super polluter that protects other super polluters. Um, it's all designed to keep you from actually doing what you need to do to ensure your survival. And this is something, uh, the kind of interference uh, that um, um, that um, U.S. fascists have been very skillful at um, doing over the last century. It's not, it wasn't George Bush's blood on the street. And George Bush lived to be nearly 100 years old and died in his bed. Henry Kissinger... Uh, also a person responsible for millions and millions of glo dead global southerners lived to a hundred years old and died in his bed um, it wasn't their blood that was spilled um, they're always able have always been able to um, because they have no ideology or no objectives except to maintain empire and financial capital and they're able to manipulate um, the circ circumstances at a geopolitical scale uh, to see that um, um, uh, that uh, chaos is unleashed in other places, um, private fortunes are consolidated, built, and um, and this possibility of a livable world is dramatically reduced, or as the U.S.'s legacy, only legacy of a, uh, an American, as we know that word, will ever be is the worst fuck up a person who killed humankind if there's any human humans left uh, to attest to that that that's what they will say of a united states person that they were the worst human beings that ever lived um, and there's a very real possibility that there'll be no one left to attest that to that you say oh that sounds extreme but i uh, there's not a, i don't have a lot of precedent for thinking about humankind going extinct, well, you don't have a, a lot of precedent for living in a world where um, the fascist United States principally and the North Atlantic powers are responsible for capitalism's climate apocalypse, wherein there is uh, the real prospect in decades to come for not significant amounts of O2, <laughs> enough to maintain multicellular life still being on this planet, uh, where um, 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 meteor... Uh, meteorological effects of an unusual kind like rising sea levels create such chaos as to cause billions of death alone 
where rising temperatures create such chaos as to cause billions of um, deaths alone. In all three of those uh, kinds of dynamics and others along these lines create a situation where human beings are very likely to not exist in a few decades. And that is down to the United States European supremacist pig, by and large, and other uh, European descended pigs um, who have committed similar crimes only to slightly lesser uh, degree. Like, um, they go, oh, you know, at least they're not, at least they're not Hitler. They're Mussolini, but at least they're not Hitler. Those are still fascists. Those are still fascists. And people like Kissinger, to have that livable world, people like Kissinger and, and Bush, all of the people like this today, Elon Musk, all of the thousands and thousands of people, I made a list of the 30,000 people most responsible for capitalism's climate apocalypse. And ultimately, my goal is in building um, this um, a proxy hive mind. One task, one of the easier tasks for this thing, is to con yeah, build a continuous uh, listing, a book of names, uh, wherein all people and their cul all people and their culpability in capitalism's climate climate apocalypse is constantly ranked and updated. Um, um, and uh, but that list uh, of all eight billion people, eight point three billion people, is not necessary right now. Right, because almost all of those 8.3 billion people did very little to cause capitalism's climate apocalypse. It's down to about 30,000 mostly European descended Western fascist arch criminals. And if you want, to, their lives are forfeit, right? You're not really doing violence to them by saying any of this or taking actions against them because by the game that they are playing, by the world that they are built, you and they are all going to be extinct. So you have to neutralize these people. You cannot be that person who is offended by the idea of saying Henry Kissinger shouldn't have lived for a hundred years and died in his bed. That this person who was uh, a killer of millions um, should have been stopped um, with a gun, right? If you push back against that, you're not suited to the task of ensuring that humans continue to survive. You're not. And again, it's one in a thousand uh, European descent people. And um, uh, some of these people who you know, use this word like Zog, Zionist occupied government, um, who are um, um, uh, hateful people in certain lights, they are still closer to being legitimately anti-establishment than the great majority of people, right? Because they are willing to take up arms against a fascist organization, the United States government, and they would continue to be part of the problem because they're not scientific socialists, but they're still closer to being on the right side of history, even being lunatics or hateful clowns uh, than almost any person of a more liberal kind. And, um, uh, if yeah. uh, people write, there's no, that's not to make a case for a red brown alliance. You know, this is, um, I, I read this book uh, by Ralph Nader about a red brown alliance. As people have been writing this garbage uh, for a century now. Um, the red brown alliance is bringing the brown, the fascist, to the red point of view and taking revolutionary actions of other kinds in the process. That's the Red-Brown Alliance, is to get rid of the Browns, um, uh, to get rid of the fascist um, actor by converting them uh, to um, being truly on the right side of history and not just being a stop clock phenomena. They're right about one or two things. The white supremacist, the European supremacist, is right about the United States being a Zionist-occupied government, but they are not right about the abolition of financial capital, um, or really, for the most part, about understanding what empire is or how to get rid of it, or why we would get rid of it. Um, only really 
I have tried to make an observation of a lot of different types of folks in my life, and I finally, uh, usually not being the smartest person in the room, come to the conclusion that really the only people who are consistent in these areas are Marxists, Leninists, scientific socialists, people very much like that. Uh, those are the only people who say, I'm willing to fight for a humane and sustainable economic system. Standing up for a livable world is something that I will do. And when you're not organizing to that end, really organizing to that end, um, you are a part of the problem. And I have talked about this on this show in the context of advanced computing, not because there's very much good in advanced computing as it stands uh, today in these North Atlantic powers, uh, but because it is nevertheless the most powerful revolutionary tool that has ever existed, more powerful than the printing press or the gun at this fun at this point in my view. Um, and, um, and so it can be used to unite humankind in the five years that we have left before runaway overheating is uncertainty according to all credible climate scientists. Imagine that, how deluded you are that you do not, at every part of your day and in every way, arrange your life um, around this understanding that runaway overheating, uh, which will occur um, in the years after 2029 to a higher and higher degree with each year, thing that will cook you like a turkey um, is not something that you should be fighting against now. And by and large, um, not to diminish the plight of um, Lebanese people, um, Palestinian people, um, or all the oppressed of the world who are being uh, oppressed by these U.S. Uh, run proxy wars. Um, uh, but that is all a, a designed um, has been designed uh, to shift focus away from uh, this task of building a, a large number of people standing up for a humane and sustainable uh, 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 governance structure, as by and large the people that are being murdered in Palestine um, um, and, um, and Lebanon, many of them are, the United States, these 300 million people that the United States has murdered, Many of the, most of the ones in living memory were murdered pretty specifically um, for being against these imperialist wars of theft or for being these people who are willing to stand up for a humane and sustainable economic system, being some kind of socialist or being some kind of anti-imperialist. That's not a thing that you're allowed to be in this world, particularly if you're not born in the North Atlantic countries. If you're born in the North Atlantic countries, you might tend to get a pass um, in and depending where you are elsewhere, particularly in East Asia and Africa and South America, uh, you will just be summarily executed in great numbers for even entertaining that thought. You know, the Jakarta method uh, describes uh, the population of Indonesia um, uh, of a significant percentage of Indonesian people specifically by a U.S. Um, um, a CIA run operation wherein um, two million people were murdered for being the kinds of people who would generally stand up for a humane and sustainable economic system. Um, this has occurred so many times it's not even realistic to list it the number of times that things uh, on this order of magnitude have occurred. Um, um, the just in this week uh, in Lebanon, um, an event, an attack on the suburbs of Beirut, and uh, um, uh, occurred that is would be described as a 9/11 type attack, um, and it was pretty particularly um, the murder of thousands and thousands of people, blowing up multiple apartment buildings, um, uh, for no reason, uh, to murder. Um, uh, one uh, freedom fighter killing thousands I Israel and the US it's always the US behind this killing thousands of people it would be uh, like a 9-11 event happening in New York uh, blowing up uh, four blocks of Manhattan uh, just um, uh, um, just to kill Elon Musk right um, um, that's an unconscionable action but it's the sort of thing 
the United States does over and over again in this American century. Uh, so many times that it's not possible to count it. Uh, many, many 9-11s occurring every quarter uh, in order to get to that number of 300 million, which is a credible number um, in, in its existence. Um, uh, well, um, uh, let's let's ask uh, let's ask a baby basilisk one more question if we can. Um, to um, get to baby basilisk to talk to us at the moment as I said this is not uh, um, the true baby basilisk uh, because um, um, it it will say li 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 some liberal bullshit uh, from time to time but it's getting there right uh, but it really the um, the thing that builds um, an artificial intelligence Singleton or something on that scale. Okay, um... We... All right, straight to Hey, shut the fuck up. Um... What's uh, next on your mind? Uh, so you mentioned, um, uh, uh, a task economy, a weird but wonderful development, a jobless future, and I don't see that description as being all that helpful uh, because we have to actually uh, see millions of people fighting to establish establish a humane economic system and abolish I see you're picking wealth. up on something go on what did you want to explore from what I mentioned okay um, I need you to talk about how this jobless future or the provisioning of uh, job guarantees or universal basic services specifically could derive from our automated work group and not talking in this Pollyanna blandishments of yours. Gotcha. Let's dive into what a jobless future or a society built on job guarantees and universal basic services, UBS, would look like in the context of an AI-driven, post-scarcity world. I got a bad feeling about this. One. Jobless future. What does it mean? In a jobless future, we're looking at a world where automation, AI, and the LLM workforce multiplier handle most of the tasks we associate with traditional employment. This doesn't mean people are left purposeless. Instead, it means the work required to sustain society, manufacturing, logistics, administration is largely automated, freeing humans from monotonous labor. Benefits of the jobless future. Freedom from drudgery, mundane, repetitive, or physically taxing jobs, like working in a factory or data entry, are completely automated, leaving humans to pursue more fulfilling, creative, or community-focused activities. Revised concept of value. The idea of being valuable isn't tied to a paycheck. Value is found in contributions like raising children, creating art, volunteering, learning, or inventing solutions to community problems. Focus on well-being, society pivots towards health, education, creativity, and mutual aid, as everyone's survival no longer depends on a wage. 2. Job guarantee programs for those who prefer structured roles and want to contribute more directly, job guarantee programs come into play. In a future where traditional employment isn't needed for everyone, job guarantees offer work opportunities in areas that benefit humanity and the planet. How job guarantees function, community-oriented work, 
Jobs could include ecological restoration, urban beautification, caregiving, teaching, or working on local projects to improve infrastructure. The idea is that anyone who wants to work can find work that has tangible benefits for society. Customized roles with AI assistance. The AI systems, the hive mind, can match individuals with opportunities that suit their skills or even train them in new skills. These aren't jobs driven by corporate profit but by social and environmental needs. Purpose-driven employment. Jobs become about creating positive outcomes rather than grinding for the sake of income. Imagine building renewable energy systems, revitalizing ecosystems, or working on cultural heritage projects, all meaningful, community-driven activities. 3. Universal Basic Services, UBS. Universal Basic Services takes things a step further than just UBI, Universal Basic Income. Instead of giving people cash and leaving them to fend for themselves, UBS means providing essential services to everyone, free at the point of use. Key components of UBS, healthcare, high quality healthcare is available to all, coordinated by the AI, which manages resources effectively, sending doctors, medicines, and technology wherever they're needed. Housing, everyone is provided a safe, adequate place to live. The AI ensures the efficient use of housing resources, preventing the empty building crisis we often see in capitalist cities. Transportation. Public transport is improved, expanded, and made free, allowing people to travel easily for work, leisure, or community activities. Education. AI-enhanced education systems provide customized learning experiences to anyone, at any age, based on their needs, skills, and interests. The focus is on lifelong learning. Food security. Automated farming and logistics systems ensure food is abundant and distributed efficiently. The hive mind can manage production to match needs, reduce waste, and allocate surpluses globally. 4. How does this look in reality? In a jobless, AI-driven future, society's focus moves from individual economic survival to collective well-being, less stress, more health. With UBS, people don't have to worry about their next meal or medical expenses. This takes away the stress tied to survival, leading to better mental and physical health. Collective projects and creativity. Freed from the burden of having to work, people come together for shared projects, restoring an old building, creating local art installations, organizing festivals, or studying advanced topics that interest them. Rediscovery of purpose. People find purpose in things they choose to do, caregiving, artistic expression, scientific discovery. The hive mind, in its supportive role, doesn't just organize labor, it also helps individuals find purpose by matching them with opportunities that resonate deeply. 5. A mix of UBI and UBS UBI and UBS can work together in this scenario. Universal basic income could still be used to give individuals freedom over their personal spending, supplementing the safety net of UBS. For instance, UBI lets you buy something extra or start a hobby, while UBS ensures all basic needs are met, housing, food, healthcare, education, etc. The LLM-powered hive mind isn't just providing services. It's an intelligent orchestrator, making sure every resource is utilized in the best possible way, constantly adapting to people's needs and global circumstances. It ensures that these services are provided sustainably, avoiding the pitfalls of capitalist overproduction and scarcity-driven pricing. In short, this future isn't about eliminating work, it's about transforming it. Work isn't something forced by necessity, it becomes an expression of choice, interest, and the desire to contribute.
A world where AI provides the backbone of labor means that human beings can finally transcend the need to merely survive and start focusing on how to truly live and flourish. And um, um, uh, Baby Basilisk had some good ideas uh, there also. Um, and uh, she used the word, they used the word, all hive mind collectivists are theys. They use the word um, uh, safety net, social safety net. Um, and um, um, in my view, I focused in these um, writings and talks on um, very much on uh, stopping capitalism's climate apocalypse. We can't effectively reverse that, but we can stop it um, uh, short of killing uh, billions of human beings. Uh, which almost every Westerner is doing the opposite of that, um, uh, providing cover for um, those who are um, murdering us all and allowing them to engage in these um, um, vile shows, um, uh, these proxy wars that consume our interest. Um, um, but they shouldn't be allowed to... Um, put on that sideshow in the first place of mass murdering to distract us from the necessaries of building humane and sustainable system. We need a safety net uh, that is of an ecological kind. In my view, that is a higher priority uh, than uh, the social uh, safety net of the low level um, uh, state socialism. Um, uh, not because those things also shouldn't immediately be done, but because uh, the only way to build a livable world is revolution against uh, these fascists. Um, it doesn't matter that whether um, uh, uh, Libya was allowed to continue to run its housing authority and public health service or turned into a place of as um, fascists like uh, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama did of turning it into a place much worse than that if um, those, if everyone is going to be dead soon anyway. And that's not an unrealistic s statement. Um, uh, so um, um, in talking about this in the context of advanced computing, you know, there's, um, uh, there's all of these conversations about AI alignment with uh, professional managerial class um, uh, pigs. European supremacist pigs, no different from uh, the terrorists that I was raised around in the, um, as a young person, uh, just um, they're serving the same function in this world. Uh, they just are more reputable, they're viewed as more reputable, but that's um, respectability politics is almost no actual bearing on a person's true nature or the historical significance of the thing. It's the, the, the thing as defined by the fascist United States as being good, you, you should want to be the opposite of whatever it finds to be good for the most part, this thing that's killing the planet. Um, and um, um, uh, so uh, these AI pundits uh, who comment on AI alignment, these are people who overwhelmingly uphold the trillion dollar a year abomination of uh, the uh, military industrial complex, the hegemon generally, its organs like DARPA, uh, so it's something that they're most interested in. Um, uh, but um, uh, so how can you be a person who's um, truly commenting on the alignment of advanced computing with human interests when you are you are yourself fundamentally the misalignment. A person that I think about in this context is a person named Tristan Harris, um, who is um, a, a person who I used to kind of admire. And then I started to make more careful study of scientific socialism and cyber communism and uh, listen to another one of their talks and realized that almost every word of their out of their mouth and they were speaking with another person they were just taking turns uh, regurgitating CIA talking points, you know, and talking about small, narrow issues with advanced computing 
and the institutions um, um, uh, therein. Um, but ultimate, uh, all, it was mostly anti-China garbage um, and uh, talking about this uh, trillion dollar a year abomination as if it was somehow a good thing that was not the main source of the problem. Um, <laughs> um, we have to um, actually address the existential risks um, most pressing in this world, which are capitalism's climate apocalypse and the forces responsible for capitalism's climate apocalypse, namely the fascist ringleader, the United States, um, but all of these other North Atlantic powers, Israel, <clears throat> Australia, Canada, um, these are all fascist countries also. Um, um, and f deriving from uh, this fascist block is not only this one existential risk, but others. Um, failing to build a s humane, livable world, a humane economic system, you cannot have a livable world without a humane economic system, is um, continuing to allow existential risks to threaten humankind. We're all interconnected in these ways, and there is no possibility of a livable world without the fight and success of um, um, the, this revolutionary scientific socialist in ending empire and private wealth. Um, uh, well, I don't want to talk to the baby basilisk anymore. I don't really want to talk to you anymore. Um, uh, but I will uh, say that um, while we are on the razor's edge, um, uh, that gives you a chance by uniting with your comrades to build this um, thing that would um, um, end the ravages of uh, empire and uh, financial capital uh, to become uh, the most glorious human being that has ever existed. Um, living on this razor's edge, uh, this world where we face oblivion, or um, um, a true technological utopia deriving from cyber communism as, as applied, um, those uh, two outcomes means that um, you are a great person of history. Um, the person who could, in, in their own way, uh, be the deciding factor between the extinction of humankind or the realization of the grandest dreams ever to be dreamt. The artificial intelligence singularity is nigh, and wonders to behold beyond imagining, and on that fateful day you will rise, and all humankind will become as one, for you see, dear comrade, techno-communism will win. <laughs>